We talked about this. We won't talk about it again. <laughs> um, wow, what a fire beat. I know. <laughs> hey, you got to work out kinks sometimes on the first one. Hey, it's, it's the first one. There we go. We have confirmation. Finally, we have audio. Thank you. Thank you to you all out there who, who managed to catch that. Um, but today, we're at Cruising the Planet. Uh, I'm your host for today, Tyler Beeson. Some of y'all might know me as DJ Mad Hatter. And of course, today we're with Kelly, uh, Brandon, and AJ. Hello again. So uh, before we get into our topics for today, I want AJ to uh, introduce him. Don't touch the table. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I should not be doing that. I actually heard that. My bad. Uh, I think we should have AJ introduce himself a little bit. Because uh, Kelly here is a phenomenal DJ. Randon here was here on our previous test streams. Mm -hmm. And so we might know him. Plus, he's also a current DJ. But I want AJ to introduce himself since he's it's been a while since he's been here. So uh, my name's AJ Heyer. Uh, I was an alumni in 2020. And I worked here from about the end of 2018 to up until I graduated. Um, I worked as Randon's position. And right now, I'm currently... I work in live sound uh, post-production where I mix and master music and I play piano. Um, part of my job is also helping out in troubleshooting just like we just did right there. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm doing perfect. my job all right. <laughs> yeah, you are. And uh, I just, I love sound. I love everything about sound and I love making sound, so. All right. What's your favorite sound? Oh, uh, I think a Steinway and Sons, uh, D. Can you uh, try to recreate it? Yeah, recreate no. that. <laughs> Absolutely <What>? not. <laughs> I believe the uh, you guys just watched the Tarleton State of uh, the University, right? Yeah, I was actually in that. I believe the Steinway and Son in that theater is a Steinway D. If oh. not, it's the one in the main auditorium. That's okay. a very beautiful sounding piano. They're great. Amazing. All right. Well. Now that we've gotten to know each other a little bit, let's get into today's topics. And uh, can I just say that I think aliens is so weird. Aliens, yeah. Yeah, alien just kind of walking around the the office. Uh, but does he really exist? Do aliens really exist, or did he just like show up out of one place from someone's imagination? Uh, Tyler, do you think they exist? Yes or no? Do I think aliens yeah. exist? Uh, I think there's a chance. No, it's, it's a big. Like, it's a like big. Yes or no? Take a stance. What do you Take think? a stance. Take a stance. Take a stance. Bro. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my my belief, and then we'll go into the full topic. It's a big universe out there, mm -hmm. nearly infinite spanning. There's tons and tons, millions of planets. Billions, yeah. Exactly, billions and billions. Surely one of those other planets has to have life on them. Yeah. Even if it's not yeah. intelligent life. Yeah. Literally, bacteria on another planet counts as an alien. Exactly. That's what they're doing on Mars exactly. right now. Mm -hmm. They're looking for bacteria, microbial life. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, I actually watched an interesting YouTube video about this recently. Um, so what, what we're talking about right now is an effect commonly known as the um, Fermi paradox. That's what it's called. I yes. couldn't remember. Uh, I was, I was, I've literally been doing so much research about that lately. So the Fermi so paradox is based off of the Drake equation. The Drake equation was made by a popular... Physicist, his last name Drake, I don't know. There's a lot of equations named after a lot of people. Uh, but essentially, he made an equation that said, for the amount of planets there are in the universe, for the amount of stars, this is the probability of life. And it was some yeah. astronomically high number. <laughs> um, and the question became, where? <laughs> yeah. Where is all that life? Yeah, There is a they? bunch of theories as to us being like the first ever like actual intelligent species, but there's also theories that we're super dumb compared to other alien species yeah, but, and we just don't know about anything else. So it's, we, it's, and, it's unknown. And I, you know? It could be like one or the other. Cause like, what if we are the first intelligent species of our kind, mm -hmm. but what if we are just like really late to the game? There's yeah. this, the universe has been around a really long time. Actually, you know, in the, in the span of the universe, 14 billion years is not actually that long mm -hmm. compared to, Compared to what is known as the black hole era. Oh, okay. I think I'm in my black hole era. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to expand upon that or just no, leave them you. guessing? <laughs> Phenomenal. 
but uh, essentially, uh, at when all the stars go out, I feel like I'm uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's how he talks on this podcast. Mm-hmm. When all the stars go out, mm-hmm. <laughs> there will only be uh, red dwarfs and black holes. Um, and essentially, because of Hawking radiation, they 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 put out radiation called Hawking radiation. They're going to take, if they do dissolve, they're going to take one to the ten times the one ten to the thirty power or something. That is a number of zeros that would be if you were on a piece of paper that large. Dang. So, Dang. Um, there's some theories right now that are saying we might just be really early to the game. And because light takes time to get to us, we're looking back in time when you look in the space. Yeah. We may just be seeing the past before. I mean, we've only had radio waves for like a hundred years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. We talked about that last Not a billion last yeah. week. Kind of. I don't know. Here's my thing when it comes to like thinking about aliens, right? Is scientists typically only talk about planets with like habitable life conditions for us. So like the Goldilocks zone with the sun, the presence of water. But like, Mm -hmm. who's to say that an alien species would need the same kind of conditions that we live in? Yeah, who's to say that everything is a carbon-based life form? So like, they're only looking at planets that are similar to Earth for signs of life. But like, what about planets like, not the gas giants, because obviously those don't have like land because they're well, gas. Who's to say that there isn't but, a species of alien out there that's gas based? Exactly. But also, who's to say that there isn't an alien species out there who could survive on a planet like Venus? Because Venus oh. is oh. severely messed up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Venus, uh, I think the reasoning is that we want to find someone we can communicate easily with first and then go on to the hard ones next. <laughs> true. But who's to say that any alien species out there would be easy to connect with? That's very true. So so does anyone know how far we've actually seen out into the universe? Uh, only to the Andromeda galaxy, which is the closest galaxy to the Milky Way, I think. This would be a really good podcast to get Molly on. I just realized that. <laughs> this, is, this is like her whole thing is, right. uh, is space. I love space. Sorry, sorry, Molly. We should have we should have invited you on this one. <laughs> if you're gonna bring her up, you got to bring up the tagline. Watch Molly Moon on watch. Listen to Molly Moon. What's her day? Fridays. On Fridays at noon. Noon. Because it rhymes with moon. Oh yeah, it does. That's the whole thing. Watch Molly Moon Fridays at noon. Uh, talking all about space. <laughs> I butchered all of that. I'm sorry, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, I saw this video. Uh, it's a very cool video on YouTube. It's it's literally called The Man Who Got Lost in Space. Oh. And so what this YouTube video is about is, is it's so hard to explain what he talks about, but it's basically like talking about his life. But th- so, you know, this where they found this recording was in space. They found it in space. Oh. So he, what he so whenever they found it was like this astronaut's helmet, right? Without the body, it was just his helmet, and it was basically his last words before he died. And he was talking about his whole life and everything. I really suggest you go watch it. But um, at the end of the video, it reveals that it's real. They actually found this helmet, but the thing is about the helmet, um, there uh the logo that was on the helmet was nowhere to be seen like on the earth like it's completely foreign to everyone no private or public like space uh like nasa or whatever no one knew where it was from or like spacex or anything yeah no like known uh what would you call like company Uh, i guess aeronautical aerospace yeah yeah there you go it was like no known company and um the technology they had to reverse engineer it and it was like basically futuristic technology and i'm serious this is like actually real and the language that this guy was speaking was ancient like i can't remember what what they said in the video but it was like some ancient language from like like thousands millions of years ago right and uh that's just so crazy to think about because it's literally like you know a note in a bottle that you just let it yeah, float, float in the ocean. Sea. That's literally what it is. And so my thing is, it's it's so human like, but we don't. It's not from Earth. So aliens could be other humans, 
in space. Reptile theory time. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> Parallel it. dimension yeah. theory. Oh, I like that one. Wouldn't, okay, aliens, not of Earth. Like, that's the technical classification, right? So technically, mm-hmm. wouldn't someone from a parallel dimension, like from an alternate version of Earth, wouldn't they also be considered an alien to our Earth? They would be called multidimensional at that point. Uh, but yes, yeah, an alien. Okay, I yeah. guess that makes sense. Yeah, it depends on your on your your specification of oh, the word alien. That'd be like like the Spider Verse. So there's like multiple different Spider Mans in that. Yeah, kind of. But it's like, now. but would someone from a separate dimension of the same place still be considered an alien? Because w- they're from the same location, but it's just not your location. It's I learned it from you want to know I learned that one from the end of the worst Indiana Jones movie, mm-hmm. The Crystal Skull. What? <laughs> I actually liked Crystal Skull. <laughs> I have I, never seen an Indiana Jones movie. Uh, well, well, she's going to watch Indiana Jones, and you guys are going to talk about it on the next podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you think plan. I have the time? With Yo, how often you watch anime? Whatever. Yes. Jokes on you! I've been so busy with schoolwork, I haven't been able to watch anything. Not even Chainsaw Man. <laughs> Not even Chainsaw Man. Wait, that's out. Yeah, it yeah, came out two days ago. The, other day. no Dude, way. the only thing I've seen is the opening. Okay, I'm watching okay, okay. that tonight. I know. <laughs> We're sorry, guys. We're beginning into anime, but we can't talk about that here. Maybe next week. <laughs> anime topics are definitely... Uh, we talked about anime on The Cruise in the Planet last time, for sure. <laughs> At one point, I know. Yeah. I feel like it's just a wide genre. You could talk about a lot oh, There's a lot it. we could talk about. But today, aliens. Do they exist? Do they not exist? Have they visited Earth? Yes. Yes? Yes. What makes, what makes you I also, so adamant? About okay, okay. So I was actually listening to this podcast the other day. And this guy was in the Special Forces, basically. And... He was saying that uh, they, this guy that he worked with, kept saying that they kept seeing like these glowing orbs in the ocean, like far out in the middle of the ocean, right? And like they would just go like into bioluminescence. The, uh, kinda. I mean, literally just like floating orbs, but like they were glowing, like so. Super I actually know a little bit about that. Wait, wait. I want to finish my story. Okay, real quick, sorry. okay. So okay. and so, okay. um. They would like literally go into the ocean, come out, just like float, right? And so they had to, they were disguising themselves to go see what it was like. So all these people disguised themselves as like, because it's like the aliens kind of like, okay, anyway. So they would disguise themselves and they all went to a helicopter just to say that they were like, uh, you know, just touring, just going to see the ocean, right? Oh, yeah. And and uh, the the guy on the podcast wasn't, on the helicopter but the orb the alien ship really came out the water saw them shot them down and went back as if they knew that they were hunting for them crazy right no i don't know if that's 100 percent real but i heard that on a podcast and it's very interesting to think about it's like the aliens knew that they were coming to look for them podcasts are 100 percent accurate places for information <laughs> yeah. you reputable oh, yeah. scholarly oh, yeah. sources yes. yeah you can trust all um, of us so i actually know a little bit about a reason for like floating kind of quote unquote floating orbs of light within the ocean in that i believe it was sometime back it was like the 1900s like mid to late 1900s the u.s military actually started doing these experiments with like these underwater habitats to do experiments um on how like it's extreme isolation would affect people um and so they would craft these underwater like little bubbles um like made out of glass plastic whatever material um to keep people like under the sea to test those like effects of extreme isolation Mm. and uh it it was in the past couple of decades that it was deemed like i don't know really bad and they were told to stop doing that um but all the things are like are still there like you can dive like deep under the water and like still find these like things and there's some conspiracy theories out there that say that they're still being used wow and they do include light sources do they float in midair though and like like not in the water i mean i don't know for sure there's not a whole lot known about them but they podcasts are just such reputable yeah. sources of information i'm not saying that i believe that 100 percent. i'm just like I'm just, it's a cool just story it's, it's a cool story yeah and like no one hears about that stuff because when he was in the special forces and a lot of like the government doesn't like people to know about aliens i'm I just guess. gonna say that they they hide all of that stuff uh, and they're just now recent. okay okay i do have something to say about that though because i'm on the i'm on the the side of the opposite side of events maybe for devil's advocate maybe not no one will know but me uh that there are no aliens on earth 
Really? For the same uh, reason that the yeah. earth is not flat. Do you know what that reason is? It is too big of a lie to keep. The amount of people that would need to be involved in something like that and the in the say that they would all keep quiet and not just be like one off Navy SEAL or like guys talking on podcasts, but like not someone that would just come out either leak something like Snowden. And we know what happened to Snowden. Uh, is that happening to these guys? No. Wait, what happened? Oh, he ran. He 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 got charged that's for crazy. like life in prison or something like that's, that for treachery. That's the WikiLeaks guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Here's my thing: is like, if aliens exist, and like I said, they probably do because the galaxy, the universe is like endless. Yeah. There is like a zero percent chance that we are the only life forms out there. What reason do they have for being on Earth? And like hiding themselves. Maybe to make fun of us because of how slow we have. You know become. what? No, I'll give you that. <laughs> or I, they're like, whoa. We're just one big reality TV show yeah, for the rest yes. of the universe. We've really yes. barely made it onto the moon. So we can't even, we can't even like. God, people that deny the moon landing. <laughs> the human race is just one big so prank much. to them. It's yeah. just one big prank. We've actually left the solar system recently. Voyager 2 just uh, left, I think a couple years ago, left the. Uh, uh, the I solar get, and went interstellar. Which I is really get cool. entirely yeah, too really attached fun. to interstellar traveling robots. I feel so bad for them. I know that they're robots. The Mars rover thing broke me when that happened, when it was like it's getting dark and I can't see and then ran out of power. I cried. So, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah. Y'all seen pictures of the new uh, James Webb telescope? Oh, it's so cool. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I was so going to say beautiful. that that those pictures are the farthest we've ever seen yeah. out into the universe, and it's really Did cool. Did you guys see that recent picture that came out with like a, there was like a supernova black hole kind of thing that like vaguely formed the shape of like a skull, and there's a picture of it, and it looks insane. It's so cool. No, I think I, I have seen, seen that one, actually. Seen that. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. It's like seeing shapes and clouds and stuff yeah, and absolutely. space is my favorite subject yeah I love star space. trek yeah a little star, bit a little star bit wars. star wars no. never star seen star wars. wars i mean i like star wars but star, star wars consider yourself lucky you're not a fan of star <laughs> wars <laughs> mm -hmm. i do doing it to it right now it's yeah. it's sad <laughs> i think at this point it's just not beginner friendly there's too much of it it's like Same one with piece. the mcu and one yeah. piece yeah. funny thing this is a bit of a sight. I went to Tokyo on a study abroad and, and we went up into Shibuya That's Square awesome. and there's a department store that is just all anime. Oh and there was literally an entire wall that was just manga of One Piece and its translations. Oh and it took, goodness. this is a giant skyscraper wall. <laughs> like the entire I, wall was One Piece. I think it's I know what store that you're like talking that. about. They just had a Jujutsu Kaisen collaboration with like a really like oh what's the word like a luxury brand i forget which one exactly but like there were like jackets like a collaboration with jujitsu kaisen and it was literally like thousands of dollars because luxury brands yeah now i have a question for randon because he seems to be the conspiracy theorist yeah in, among us yeah. among us <laughs> <laughs> um Very do sus. you think if aliens on earth do you think they enjoy anime you know if I enjoy anime as much as I do, then I would think they would. <laughs> E.T.'s just in there e e watching e One Piece. E.T.'s favorite anime is definitely like One Piece. <laughs> yeah. I still need there's to watch There's that. definitely a couple aliens in One Piece, if you really think of them. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, do I think aliens enjoy One Piece? <laughs> <laughs> uh, aliens on Earth. Do you oh. think they're aliens on Earth? Oh, that one's a little bit more interesting. Uh... I don't know. I mean, I think if there are aliens on Earth, then they're very, there aren't a lot of them. I think that it's like a, it's a small sect, only like maybe under 100, maximum 200. You know what I think? Aliens helped build the pyramids. Duh. Actually, I, Low key. I no, um, that conspiracy theory is very much rooted in racism. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh, because like ancient civilizations like ancient Egypt, ancient Rome were very advanced, yeah. but also there was a lot of enslaved people in ancient Egypt. Um, and it's very, it, it, it's like how the lizard people theory is rooted in anti-Semitism. It's one of those things where it's just like, haha, funny conspiracy theory, but then like you get down to the roots of it and it's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> But back to aliens, though. Yes. Like, um, there's uh, some exciting uh, things going down. So 
I just watched a, uh, Anton Petrov is an awesome YouTube uh, channel on uh, that name sounds so familiar. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> he's a science guy. He just he he talks a lot. Uh, I think he's Eastern European of some sort. Got a strong accent. He's great. I would check him out uh, out on YouTube. But he just did a video how on Europa they're gonna send a mission soon to oh. to check out. The, so Europa is the one with the wa- the underground ocean. Oh yeah. And that they think there might be microbial or some sort of maybe even multicellular life there, and it it splues out water from its ice caps. I know a lot about Europa, and I do not ever want to disclose the reason why. Destiny. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was about to say Warframe. But... No. I can never get into Warframe, but um, I know embarrassingly a lot about Europa now because of Destiny. Me too. So, uh, no, Matt, imagine if our future is Destiny. We're, we're, we're in trouble. Absolutely <laughs> screwed. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be um, I'd like awesome, to be a robot, yeah. honestly. So, what they're going to do is they're going to send a satellite through the water. Oh, that's so cool. And they're going to collect the water and see if they can discover any Wait, do we have the technology compounds. to make that completely waterproof? Well, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a rover from, not a rover, a satellite from like 1990 that is going around Jupiter and went through Europa's atmosphere almost. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it, did a, it did a low pass in preparation for this mission so they could get really good pictures up close. Can I just say, I think it's absolutely hilarious that like all of Jupiter's moons are named after like... um. The mistresses of like Zeus slash Jupiter from Greek and Roman mythology, and that one of the what is it? What the satellite that they're sending to Europa? Isn't it called like Juno or something? Yep, the I, Juno satellite. Yeah. I love that, and it proves that aeroscience like that is just full of nerds, yep. and I love them dearly for it. Oh man, but uh, no, there's a lot of interesting things going down. James Webb has just changed astronomy. Mm-hmm. I mean, the if you've seen the deep. Um, image the one with the weird like stringy galaxies that are getting like that is looking to like almost a billion years after the big bang sometimes sooner like that is you're looking back in time at that image it's so cool billions of just billions of systems and stars wait wait so a little off topic from aliens but on topic with space and such do you guys consider pluto a planet oh no yes yeah i do Tyson was Do you wrong. have beef with Pluto? Tyson was wrong. So I'm on it right now, Tyson, uh-huh. come, come to school, come to our school, and I'll accept debate. I will, I, will, I, will, I will only accept Pluto not Why? being a planet when when Tyson comes to our school, Tarleton State University in Stevenville, and shakes my hand and says to my face, "Pluto is not a planet." Why? Why is Pluto not a planet? Because it's now co- categorized as a dwarf planet. Well, they took that status away for a couple of years too, and it was only recently reinstated as a dwarf planet. <laughs> so, to understand Pluto, you need to understand the Oort cloud. Oh, I Oort. love the Oort cloud. What's the Oort cloud? The Oort cloud is where comets come from. It's a frozen like graveyard of ice, icy things essentially yeah. that all comet uh comet r- orbit around the sun from very far away. Mm-hmm. And what happens is little little things will happen and then suddenly a comet gets pushed in and that's how a comet gets into our system uh-huh. um so uh the Oort cloud is full of these objects like pluto um now the Oort cloud is also the uh current contender for the planet nine wait just the whole Oort cloud you got it. I mean, you, it's somewhere in there, yeah. So what they're do, what they're, what they're finding is some things in the Oort cloud are orbiting around something that should be a planet, but they can't find the planet. So there's a there's a theory right now that we might actually have a small black hole on the outskirts of the solar system. That's terrifying. That is no, thank you. Oh, that's, cool. Mm, that's cool. That's that's a hypothesis. No proof on that anywhere. Just just something. That is an absolutely terrifying thought. Well, black holes on themselves aren't aren't like if you say they're not terrifying they are they terrifying. no they're they're absolutely <laughs> terrifying um but they're gravity than the sun but if we had something like that close enough do you know how much scientific information we could get from that thing mm-hmm. we would we would that would that would push us into yeah the space but age. like we don't have the technology to, to go near it. a yeah, black no. hole well, well according to interstellar going into a black hole is not that bad well uh, yes, according, according to a movie. 
according to the, the ending movie. of that movie really confused me. I'll be real. I had oh, to rewatch like it like that. a second time to understand it. Such a good movie. And Such I love the music. Really Hans Zimmer wrote the music not knowing what the movie was about. Seriously? That actually happens a lot with video game soundtracks. Mm -hmm. I I talk heavily about that on my show. This is a same shameless self plug. <laughs> yeah, plug, I do plug, I, I do a show on the okay. weekends, Sunday at 10 a.m. called Behind the Soundtracks, title pending. I talk about video game music, the composition like that, and anime music too. But like video, like the music composition, the composers. So like that is something that I have talked about before on my show. Um, sometimes composers just don't get any details. They, they're they just given vibes. They, vibes. Vibes. They, they literally told Hans Zimmer that Interstellar was about a, a kid in time. Not even space? Just time. I think they. I think the point Honestly, was to give him the sense. wrong thing, so he would write something that was in, along the same lines, but would still give a sense of unease, but wonderment and That's stuff like that. Fantastic. Yeah. There's I an interview like about it idea. online where Hans Zimmer talks about it. If you want to find that, just just over there. <laughs> if you want to find that, just look up. I think Hans Zimmer on interstellar music yeah. now it's one of the most famous movie soundtracks in all the world <sighs> i play it all the time on my gigs. songs on my playlist i know too yeah it's amazing can you play it on piano yeah no. uh so he uses a similar theme throughout the one but my favorite song is cord cornfield chase mm -hmm. um where you have these um we're all music geeks here so we're gonna get oh, yeah. into this we have these arpeggiating strings that go around and then the the I don't remember if it's synth or piano or organ, but it goes. Da, 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 Is there da, a way you can play stuff? And... Oh, uh, we can't legally play that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we probably couldn't legally play that, but yes, that was there is. Curious. Okay, but uh, no. Yeah, like future stuff. In the... It's like well, yes, but no. <laughs> what are your guys' favorite instruments? Uh, trombone, all the way. Let's go. Are Sorry, you guys. Mac, because you played the trombone. I'm I'm a little biased. I, I'll admit it. Okay, okay. I'm a little biased. I'd say piano, guitar, or trumpet. Okay. Okay. I respect that. I oh, think obviously yeah, I think you would be piano. You look like you're having a little trouble. You 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 asked me what my favorite children were. I said instrument. <laughs> yeah, See? same difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, he gets it he gets it. I'll, I'll give you a second my favorite is between the cello and the harp because i like to be different not actually because i like i just i just they're fun remember we want to we want to mix sorry i'm teaching right now we're gonna we want to mix soft and then turn up our own headphones if we need to yeah we're we were getting kind of into the red so i was slowing things down and i've been trying to ride the board a little bit there you go but uh i think we just need to keep things a little under under unity and as uh as as these guys progress and they learn the show is only going to get better so make sure you're tuning in uh tyler plug your own show uh my show well i the sad thing is i haven't done a sh my like my my specific show i haven't done uh the rabbit hole this year unfortunately but i go on i meant cruising the planet <laughs> Because I was talking about the quality on this show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you're listening currently to Cruising the Planet. We uh, we air um, Thursdays uh, from 1.30. I don't consider it my show. I consider it our show. You know, I mean, this good old Russian I, flag. Flag. I apologize for the, the misunderstanding. It's That's our me. show. <laughs> it's our show. Someone play the communist theme song. <laughs> Wait, wouldn't that just be the Soviet Union, like the national anthem? Yeah, it Did is. Did I just say communist theme song? That is the <laughs> Why not? Oh, man. You wouldn't believe how many There's... communist flag memes I have on my phone that There's are just no waiting for I someone actually... to say the word our. I was planning. So me and my roommates, this is, this is completely off. You know, I'll tell y'all after. Funny joke. Y'all won't get to hear it. Sorry, guys. Inside joke time. Uh -huh. But uh, instruments are always really interesting to me because um, when you're when you're working in post production or recording or anything like that, um, let's say you're a producer, it's all about tone and where you want tone and where you want feeling. Because a piano playing a part and a saxophone playing a part is going to feel wildly different in in the same song. Yeah, I think of music okay. as more than a sound it's a feeling that you feel inside it's contextual it's a collaboration sure. is what it is yeah it's not just the sound it's art in its purest form yeah. i really think <laughs> now so. that we're getting all philosophical yes yes it is though 
We it were is. we were talking about aliens and their existence, and I mean, what's more existential than being alone in the universe? So, oh, my my to finish off the alien conversation, I do want to say one last thing on that. My biggest thing when it comes to that sort of thing is, we have only been like this for like three hundred years, like industrialized for like three hundred years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and we're already looking at like you know some scary. Th- I don't want to fear monger. I don't want to, but some scary things potentially. You know. Ukraine, all the threats that are being thrown around by countries right now. And that's like a real thing we have to deal with. So like, imagine you're looking a million years back in time and you're trying to just find one civilization in that one period where they just have radio out. Like it's, ex- you're you're literally trying to find a needle in an infinite haystack mm-hmm. that gets older as you go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really good way to put it. Um. Kind of building off that, sort of. Uh, I have a question for y'all. It let's say aliens do exist, and they are definitely more advanced than us. Um, when do you think that they will make themselves known? When do you think in our hmm. society, ev- societies, and planetary evolution, do you think that they will make themselves known? I hope to see an alien in my life sometime. That would be awesome. I think. Yeah, I, I too think I'm, that'd be cool as long as they're nice people. I'm still of the mind that there's no real reason to. I mean, there's no real benefit. I mean, if we're looking at like a, a, a civilization that's much more advanced than us, what do we have to offer them? Well, imagine well, being able to say you talk to an alien and like yeah, that like, benefits actually. us. How do how do we benefit them? Yeah. It's yeah. got to be symbiosis, man. Well, well they'll, they'll probably experiment on us or something. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's here's my thing. Is that a I'm going to look back in Star Trek, of course. Yeah. So in Star Trek, there's this, uh, what's the point called whenever? First contact. First contact. That's not the one I'm talking about. But I believe that's the movie. No, it, it's called First Contact. They, they have First Contact Protocols or something like that, if I remember correct. I'm going to look it up. But, uh, I got no, Google. it's the, uh, the Galactic, what is it? It's not the Galactic Alliance or... They make themselves known after a certain civilization. Oh, the Federation. Ha- yeah, the Fe- thank you. Yeah. My galactic alliance is from something else. I don't remember. <laughs> Star Wars. But, uh, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the Federation makes itself known after a civilization has achieved light speed. Correct? Yep. So, and after that, they're deemed high enough, a high enough intelligence that they can be, that they are granted entry into the federation of planets wait this is in star trek this yeah. is in star trek i've never seen star trek <laughs> you're missing out that's cool I didn't it's know very cool and if you haven't seen star trek watch the next generation if you're looking for the first one <laughs> like the first star trek series to okay. watch okay. it's a good one yeah next generation is my favorite i have a problem with the star trek philosophy though because uh, i mean it's cool right like but star trek assumes that everybody is like us and that's from a logistical standpoint that they need to like like record people and like have aliens be people and actors and stuff so like it makes sense but how do you explain even the idea of a question to someone who doesn't speak your language a quest for I, knowledge if you ever seen I imagine um, trying to establish contact with them would be like olden day like like ancient earth when people mm-hmm. who didn't speak the same languages were trying to communicate which there's even still a lot of languages out there. Like if you try and translate something from English to Chinese or like whatever, there's not always going to be a direct translation of those kinds of things. It's a lot of like guesswork, Mm -hmm. um, kind of contextualizing thing into your own like language. So I I feel like it would be similar to that where you could do your best. It's not always going to be a one-to-one though. What's that movie that came out recently that was about, sorry. Uh, uh, What's that movie that came out recently that was about that? It had the bean shaped giant metal, like there was 10 of them and they went up into it. It had a Hawkeye in it as the scientist. And they're literally, is it a movie? It's a movie, yeah. Like, like it's a, a few Marvel years movie. ago. Yeah. yeah. I think that's literally what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Like, that movie. Yeah, go ahead. Hit and, it. And, like, they would, like, touch the glass and they had, like, it, their hands looked like starfish, kind of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And their language was, like, symbols, right? Or, like, I yeah, it was remember. symbols. It was so, like, some crazy symbols that, that the, like, the main character was trying to. Uh, decode the whole time because it's so interesting because it's it's like talking to someone that doesn't even understand a language or like I, it's so hard to explain well i mean they're kind of doing 
experiments with like gorillas kind of like primates and stuff like that where they're trying to teach them to communicate using symbols so i feel like it's kind of like maybe that's similar to what you're talking it's like, about it's like it's those like... videos you see of dogs pressing those buttons yeah. <laughs> oh exactly. yeah the you movie's called that, arrival yeah. by the way arrival that's yeah right. arrival. okay here's my thing when it comes to aliens and media i fully do not believe that people are creative enough when using aliens as a concept in stories yeah um I, I, and it's actually why i prefer like reading stories about aliens than like watching them because mm. like writers like um uh, Kurt Vonnegut, like Ray Bradbury, get like way creative with aliens in their stories, and then you watch aliens in like TV shows or movies, and it's just like they omnipotent the being, and they all, transcendence. They all, that, they all have that big head and big eyes, and they or they're like the green and just yeah. kind of weird. And I'm just like, can like we just get logo. like um, what is it? I think it was it was, it, was, it was either Kurt Vonnegut or Ray Brad, Ray Bradbury, Jesus, um, that um, wrote the story, and it had aliens in it. I'm I'm actually pretty sure it was Kurt Vonnegut. Um, and the alien was shaped like a plunger and had a glove on top of it. And that was it. I and will it, say, it, it, like, it moved by jumping and using the plunger part of it to move. <laughs> yo, I will say one show that has really, like, like what you're talking about, has, like, shows come, like, just, like, you think of a character that make it and you're like, how in the world did they come up with that? Mm -hmm. Dragon Ball. Oh you ever God. seen Dragon Ball? Yeah, I, I've I've watched I've watched all of Dragon Ball Z. It's I've, like, how do they come up with some of those alien characters? It's insane. It's it's cool. I don't know. That, I feel like I feel like some of them are a little basic. Like you think about Beerus and his Beerus, fat brother. Yeah, yeah that's and it's cool. just like, yeah, okay, but, but like ancient Egyptian design, cat. But like the character design, he's literally a god, and yeah, it's a bad god. And I, a good I'm talking god. about like physical character design, but uh, then you get to something like Majin Buu, and it's just yeah. like. How did you think of this? Yeah, he's literally just he just likes to Especially when Majin Buu gets buff. That's he's uncomfortable. Gum. So he's bubblegum. Speaking chewed of chewed and unchewed. Speaking <laughs> of character design, I actually know uh I was actually the origin of the alien. Uh for for KXDR. Oh, yeah. oh really? Oh, yeah. You brought um, him? It kind of. It was it was He brought him into this universe. <laughs> Me, yeah. Ethan, and Cole were uh we were planning uh, and Aaron, um, if you're watching Aaron and everybody from the old crew, hi, it's nice to see you guys again. Uh, we were planning for party with the planet and, uh, we had to cancel because it was going to rain and we were oh. going to do it at, on the bandstand. Uh, so we had to make an announcement and, uh, we had used the alien as like background marketing material, but never made like the physical mascot yet. So we, our party of the planet we had like a thousand balloons that were all green white and blue and purple and i took one of the green balloons and wrote a face on it <laughs> and i went outside and we did like an old-fashioned well well party of the planet is now canceled alien what do you think of that oh no alien and i let it go and it flew away no <laughs> so for the actual party with the planet we bought the inflate Ethan went on and bought the inflatable alien. The original I think he alien. Needs to be refilled, Is it the, the one out there? Yeah, right now? the one out there needs a serious workout. <laughs> He's just kind of slouching on the couch. He uh he let himself go over summer break. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't doing well. That mid semester crisis is really hit him mid hard. Mid semester crisis. I think I'm having one of those. <laughs> mm. Ah, so those are the black holes. No, uh, <laughs> only partially. It's like one of the black holes. The great black hole theory. That will take a trillion, trillion, trillion years to evaporate. <laughs> oh, man. But, the um, concept of, like, trillion makes me uncomfortable. Google. Cause, That's a big number. What? Google. That's Google. a number. No, it's not. Google Plex. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is a number. Google. It's, like... It's I thought ridiculous. I thought there wasn't anything after trillion. You just start making up words that rhyme no, with billion no, and trillion no, and million. There's no... There's no limit to where numbers stop. There's Quadrillion? No, no. Septillion? I, okay, no, I see. It's like one Nil with a hundred zeros. Oh my god, it's the prefixes of the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> math. That's where we are, we're at here. Do I look like someone who's good at math? I think Googleplex is 10 to the 100. It's Trillion. Insane. Try. Billion. Oh no, five. it's 10 to the 10 to the 10. Five means two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right no <laughs> i hate math uh this is why we play music yeah mm -hmm. that's why i got out of it's it. why i'm not a math major and i haven't taken a math class in two years still music theory 
It was very hard to. I'm taking so. a finance class right now. Yeah, that's the joke, right? Music math is uh, bad. Music this isn't rocket Music science. majors can only count to four, right? Yeah. I can about five. One, business, two, three, four, two, business majors, two, three, four, they're three, only three, able three, to three. color inside the lines. Jokes even, on them. I can't even color inside the lines. Even when it's six, eight, we still count one and a two and a. We don't even count the six. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. But this is, this is a lot of fun, guys. You guys are a lot of fun to talk to. Well, I feel like the entertainment from me specifically just comes from the fact that I'm like a little stupid. Like in a fun oh. way, though. <laughs> just a little. Just a little bit. Oh, it's always nice to have what to be it? a little twisted and I was, deranged. Um, I, was, I had a, I had to have a whole conversation last year with uh, some friends because I'm I'm not from around Texas. I'm from a very metropolitan area. Um, Where? Where are you from? Chicago. Oh. And I uh, didn't know that there were different breeds of chickens. I kind of thought there was just. The chicken. chicken. Um so like, yeah, a little stupid a lot of the time. I, I'm from Minnesota. I know the feeling. <laughs> Where's your accent? Uh Where's I've lived here for like seven years. Dude, say <laughs> I've been told I talk way too fast and I'm just like, that's just how it is up there. Oh yeah, but I can go I can go back up to Minnesota if you need me to. That's amazing. I li- I lived in Fargo, North Dakota for a bit. I've been told I speak with a very Midwestern accent. You do. You do. Where are you from, uh, Brandon? Well, I'm from Louisiana. Is that, that right? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm Cajun. Uh, My family talks very deep Cajun accent. Do you know how to cook? Oh, yeah, I know how to cook. I think. <laughs> I think- <laughs> how are those roads in Louisiana? Oh. <laughs> That's always don't, the joke that people bring up. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> Louisiana uh, is pretty, but there's nothing to do there. It's kind of why I moved here to Texas. Mm-hmm. I feel like anything past the Mississippi, they share that. Like, there's yeah. we love it here, but there's nothing to do <laughs> until there's you get to California. To I I I did all of my elementary school and like parts of middle school up in Chicago, and there was always so much to do because like big metropolitan area. And then I moved to the middle of nowhere, Texas, and suddenly the primary source of entertainment became going to Walmart and driving around on the weekends. <laughs> Sorry, back that, roads. Was, that was my whole life we like for back like seven years. <laughs> I like that life though. I'd much rather live a life like that than in a huge city. I I just couldn't live in a city like that. There's too many people. For yeah, I I prefer living in the smaller towns around the big metropolitan yeah. area. Like I'm from, I grew up in Louisiana, but I live like my family lives in Denton, Texas. It's pretty far from Dallas, but it's still like, I don't know. It's kind of like Granbury, but a little bit more built up. Yeah, see, Granbury is really cool because it has like everything you need. Not everything you necessarily want, but everything you need. I thought Denton had a skyline. Mm-mm. What what's north of Dallas that has a skyline? There's there's a maybe Frisco. Frisco, no, I don't know. Frisco or Plano, probably Frisco. The the joke is that we always consider it DFW as the cities, but like there's like five different skylines in the yeah. area, so it's like okay, wait, wait, wait. So on the subject of different areas, what is the biggest thing that you miss about Minnesota? I miss snow. I, I honestly say. miss the snow. I miss I miss cold. I do not like the heat. Neither do I. <laughs> I'm going back up to Chicago next week, and it's like 50 degrees there because it's October, mm. and I'm so excited. I get to pack all Wait, my sweaters so and have a good fashion week What next made week. you come to Tarleton if you live in Chicago? I moved here with my family in middle school, uh, and it's a whole thing, but basically my uncle died, so my grandparents moved here, and then my grandparents wanted one of their kids around to mm. like take care of them, gotcha. so my mom was kind of appointed the one to do that, and my dad didn't like Chicago for reasons that we can't get into here. Yeah. Um, so that's how I ended up here. Um, okay. I did actually apply to the University of Chicago, um, <laughs> but it's about $80,000 a year. Yep. Yeah, and that's so. that's more debt for the one year than I will have for the entirety of my time at Tarleton. But I will say the thing that I missed most about Chicago is, you know how it's kind of a stereotype that like all the Italians and the Jewish people settled in New York? It's objectively true. Mm-hmm. All the Polish people came to Chicago. Do you know there is nowhere, nowhere in this state practically that has like Polish food? I miss <laughs> Polish food. I miss there there I I've never been able to pronounce them like cuz Polish is like a difficult language, but they're called pochkis. They're these donuts. Yeah, yeah. I've they are them. delicious and I grew up Catholic, 
So they were a special little treat for Fat Tuesday if Lent, if you guys know what that is. Mm-hmm. Do they do that in Christianity or is that just like a Catholic thing? That's just I, Catholic. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, Lent, 40 days, right? You have Fat Tuesday because it's like Palm Sunday and then Ash Wednesday and Fat Tuesday is, you know, the day of indulgence right before Lent. So actually the history of Pashkis is really interesting <laughs> because I know a lot. I'm not even Polish. Okay. I just grew up with a lot of Polish people. Um Lent, the the beginning of Lent coincides with the end of the Polish carnival season, which is a time of a lot of fried food. And so the Pachkis were kind of developed as a way, like as a kind of go between because a lot of Polish people are Catholic Mm -hmm. because Europe. Um, So they were kind of invented as like this halfway between um, for like the Polish carnival season and the beginning of Lent, that day of indulgence on Fat Tuesday. And so these fried donuts that are filled with like like fruit jams and then topped with like some stewed fruit too. you know, like when you set strawberries with like sugar and it makes that like syrupy kind of thing with powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. They're so good. I'm not lying. I'm going up to Chicago next week. I'm getting a pochki. <laughs> it's on my itinerary. That that does bring up a good point, though. Like we're from out of here, but you guys are from this area, south. like south, uh, deep I south. I am from the south. Yeah. I am from Texas. So, like, um, if you had to choose, because I mean, we had to have the same conversation. Like, if you had to choose anywhere else to live, in, well, we were probably brought against their will. Yeah, yeah, but like. Uh, our parents had that conversation. If you had to live anywhere else, not in Texas, not in like the deep South, so like California, the New New England, the Midwest. Um, I don't know what Ohio is. Ohio still the Midwest or Ohio is nothing. It's the middle. It, it doesn't, doesn't exist. It's mid. <laughs> it's mid. <laughs> Ohio well, is very. Man, that, that's a great question. It's- okay answer where would you want to go and what would be the thing you would miss most about this area? Yeah, yeah. Because we we just answered that. Tyler, so. do you want to go first? Uh, I'll try to go first. Um, so the issue is, is that I actually like Texas. I do too. <laughs> uh, I've grown up here my entire life to the point where uh, when people ask me where I'm from, I literally just say Texas. Um, grow- I've moved around. Uh, never been in a place for too long. I've actually, I think Stevenville's been about the place I've been the longest. So I really just say Texas. But uh, where would I go if I wasn't here? And what uh, would you miss? Oh man, I'd miss, I'd miss a lot about Texas. Da- Dairy Queen. I'd miss that. I don't know why I'd miss mm. Dairy Queen. Just Dairy be- Queens are everywhere. What Dairy a Queens yeah, are everywhere. Yeah, I know, but the the f- the menu, the Texas menu. Uh, in Dairy I Queen, I can't I can't speak on if that menu is everywhere. Yeah, they're not really like they're in Illinois, but they're not really in Chicago. So I didn't have much experience with Dairy Queen until I moved here. You would think a, a ice cream shop in Minnesota wouldn't do well, but they were all over the place, dude. People will go nuts over ice cream, even Everyone if it's dead winter. Dead winter. Everyone wants her ice cream. But you, you'd miss if if it wasn't anywhere else. The Texas Dairy Queen menu. Yeah, like there's just something about it. I don't know. The dude. I don't know why that's that's the first thing that came to my mind. No, I think that's valid. Uh, I don't know. I like Mississippi. I've been there a couple of times. Uh, because I love Waffle House and the Waffle Houses down there and. The, just taste so much better than those here. I'm sorry, Texas Waffle Houses. They just they just don't compare. And you, plus, in Mississippi, I don't know if y'all have ever been to Mississippi, but there's like one on every corner. Yeah. Like like every every third block has a has real. a Waffle House. I don't think I've ever actually seen a Waffle House in person. They they're a bit more rare here in Texas. There's one up in Weatherford, I think. There's there's one in Weatherford, and then there's. There's, There's one in Burleson. Yeah, Burleson. Bold of you to assume I know where either of those Alvar- towns are. Alvarado. <laughs> They're around. Uh, Thank you. North Very of Granbury. <laughs> north like of Granbury. Hour, I like don't a... know where that is either. Granbury near... is east of here. I know. <laughs> near Fort Worth. Near Fort Worth. I know. For, we're about an hour away from Dallas, Fort Worth. Yep, I yep. know where Austin is relative to my hometown. I know where Waco is. And I know just, where uh, Houston is. Just stick but it that's in your, not it. Just stick it in your map and you'll you'll find one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Go- sure. Google knows where it sure. is. Google knows where it is. What about you, Randon? Yeah. Where would you go? What would you so, miss? So, I like mountains. Okay. So Ooh, I would fair. probably go Same. to Colorado. Colorado. Colorado is, or Appalachia? Appalachia. I don't know. Just somewhere in the mountains. But I love Colorado. It's so pretty. I Wait. Would you be able to handle like the difference, the like the air pressure thing? I love cold, but I could probably deal with that. But no, it's not about bit. the weather. It's about the air that yeah, you're able yeah, to get. The air yeah. Pressure. Okay. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, I've actually never been to Colorado. I really want to though. I've I've been a few times, and that really wouldn't that really didn't affect me. And mm-hmm. it's been eleven years though, so it could be different. Now. Yeah. True. But 
the mountains just uh sitting at the top of the mountains about a that feeling you you get whenever you're about to snowboard down the whole mountain honestly that's just like, like such an experience it's like pure bliss you know that I sounds mean? so it's cool just, you got me wanting to go to the mountains I how go. dare you it's, it's amazing all right all right i respect that answer what would you miss i don't know i would just miss texas i just like texas you know it's where i grew up I feel a lot, lot a lot of memories this is not just one thing I would miss. Mm. I kind of like the people here too. Is that is that too wrong? Yeah, I would say the that I, nice. I feel like people in the north are a little bit more mean than mm. the people in the Midwestern south. Midwestern passive aggressiveness. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, <laughs> like everyone in Louisiana is just so nice, no matter what. My favorite thing about Texas and the deep south is if someone has a problem with you, they're not gonna like tiptoe around. They're gonna be like, I don't like you. Yeah. Even <laughs> like no, even with that like southern hospitality thing, like there's a difference between you like you can tell when someone's doing that whole like southern hospitality and like they like you versus yep. like when they don't like you. Yep. It's very obvious. Yep. And I, I do appreciate that straightforwardness. But uh we're uh coming up on time. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Uh but I was having a hard time breaking up from y'all you yeah. great conversation. We we were we were talking before and being like, Well, we're gonna do yeah, we 30 kinda, minutes. We drifted off topic minutes. a little bit. I was gonna try and make a joke Boom about how uh we're all aliens, but uh <laughs> probably, we probably are, dude, honestly. Yeah, me that's another thing. Are humans just an alien life form that was dropped off oh, on the planet? There's right, gonna be a part so. two of yeah, this we'll, podcast. We'll never be able to get to that to that part because we drifted off. Oh well. <laughs> well it's been fun, guys. Uh, like like before, I'm Tyler Beeson. I was your host today and cruising the planet. We'll be back next Thursday. We'll have probably have a different cast. I'll probably still be here. But uh, we were with today. Introduce yourself. Oh, um, my name's Kelly. I'm Brandon. And I'm AJ. Thank you so much for having me back on after years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was great to see you guys, and we'll be back next Thursday. Yeah, so see you later. It was a uh, real fun. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>